How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Ruffled Rowlet, and welcome back to a brand new video, guys. So today we have a little bit of a theory video here sent to me by one of you viewers, one of you lovely viewers out there. Zico sent this to me. So Zico actually has an interesting theory to add on top of the previously discussed theory about the next region being based in India, which we already talked about. We already talked about India being a potential region for Pokemon Generation 8. And of course, I know a lot of people keep telling me, like, dude, but you keep saying this place is gonna be this, you know, this place is gonna be the next region, this place is gonna be the next region. Hear me out. These are all theories. It's all for fun. It's not supposed to be, you know, just 100% being like, this is exactly what's gonna happen. If, you know, in, in one video, we're hypo hypothesizing and, you know, speculating that it's gonna be the UK, doesn't mean that, you know, that's what it is. Or that in one video, we're talking about, like, for example, this one, just because this is a theory about India being the next region, doesn't mean that that's, you know, the end all is all. It's just theories and it's just for fun at the end of the day, you know, at the end of the day, guys. So please keep that in mind. It's all for shits and giggles. Also, thank you, phone. Either way, so it's all for fun, guys. Don't take it too seriously. Don't take it, you know, too. Uh, just, you know, kind of think about it just as a fun little thing uh, to just kind of keep us going until we get to. Let's go Pikachu, let's go Eevee's reveal, uh, or sorry, release, and then also, you know, as we kind of get into the next year and start talking about Gen 8 for real, with potentially new leaks and new rumors coming out, because we know for a fact that's going to be happening, you know, last year or this year rather, we had Pixel Par with all that information, this next year we're going to have even more crazy stuff, so just keep that in mind. So either way, he was sending me this, so hello Ruffle Rowlet, I'm a subscriber, I'm, an a f I'm a fan of your page, thank you for all the videos you post, I appreciate them very much, thank you dude, I appreciate the fact that you watch them. So, I've sent this email to other people, but no one really paid much attention to it. I'm sending it to you because I'm hoping you might. I can't help uh, but want to keep trying when it comes to the next generation of Pokemon because I feel like there's a lot of uh, a lot of points people are not talking about and have missed. This is only a theory, but I feel like it's a well thought out one and hope and I was hoping you could work with it and add some of your own research towards it, but it uh, I went I went in depth as to why for the region and as to why the starters as well. So, what is he talking about? The region's going to be India. That's what his, you know, theory is. He thinks it's going to be India. So, I gotta say, I think it's a good point because I've already talked about India being the next region. Actually, let me see if I can find you the video where I specifically talked about it in because I actually did a video on this and I talked about, let's see, Ruffled Rowlet, uh, let's see, India. I'm certain I did it. Yes, I did. So you know, I did a video on it. Pokemon Switch, uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Pokemon Switch 2019, Gen 8 based in India theory, and Ryuki from India. So I've already talked about this. I've already talked about Ryuki, and this was actually based on Nintendo uh, Kosuo's uh, post, because Nintendo Kosuo has a lot of good theories, and I'm probably going to cover some of those theories in the future for you guys, because some of them are really, really cool. But for now, let's continue with this. So, Pokemon Generation 8, where? Region India. So, Young Goose had a big reason for this theory. If you look at its Pokedex entry in Sun and Moon, it states that he was originally not from that region. Region. Hawaii actually has a uh, has a mongoose that was imported to Hawaii from India to control pests on the island. But this wasn't the only reason for the theory. They have already been uh, there's already been leaks being posted that tie to previous leakers from Sun and Moon. The same people that leaked images of the starters' final evolutions. These leakers have stated that the script for Gen 8 has been completed and is being translated, and that the names of all new Pokemon have been made and are being tra trademarked as we speak. They also said the concept for the new region were based off of a historical uh, historical cult uh, culture wait culture versus innovation or i think innovation versus um uh, yeah i think it's innovate yeah culture versus innovation or innovation versus culture i don't know either way so the uh, the range uh, wait this rang huge for me india is full of all kinds of historical cre uh, cultures uh that would be phenomenal for storytelling in pokemon i agree I agree. Now, of course, I think a lot of people are more, like, onto the idea of it being Spain, just because, oh, Masuda was in Spain, but I've got to say one thing, guys. I think Masuda going to places doesn't matter, okay? Because he's been in Germany now, so does that mean that we're going to get a ger German region? I don't think so. It's just, you know, he goes places. It, you know, he's a businessman. He's, you know, it's his job. He's supposed to visit these places for marketing reasons, right? It's not, he's not there because this or that. He's there because it's his job. You know what I mean? It's not that he just, you know, maybe he loves these places. Like, definitely, I could potentially see a, a Spanish region. I would definitely be up for it. But I don't think we can really take the fact that he traveled there as 100% proof anymore. Because that's what we used to kind of decide of on before. We're like, okay, he traveled to these places. That's what we're going to be getting. I mean, look at, like, you know, Hawaii being, you know, the, the place they based Alola on. You know, I'm not sure. Did he travel there? I'm really curious because it's a very small place, right? It's a very small place. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you, if they base the next game on a very small area again. Or if they decide to go for something bigger like India, or Spain, I'm fine with, like, for me, I'm fine with either, as long as it's not, like, some, like, weird set of islands, and I have to, like, take boats and shit, I'm fine with it, as long as I can just, like, normally make my way around the, the place, and it's open, and there's, you know, 
mountainous areas and whatnot, I'm happy. So, either way, let's continue. So, also, uh, la, la, let's see. Uh, all kinds of cultural stuff for sword tailing and Pokemon. The alchemic aspect that ties uh, ties to it, al along with uh, Vishnu and all their other gods that tie into the Hindu slash Paki slash Muslim slash Buddhist culture. And the culture of the region is changing drastically because of all the innovation the country has been investing in. Uh, this seems like a ideal time and st uh, and storyline for Pokemon to implement that that switch, right? So. I wouldn't deny that. I would not deny that 100%. I could agree with you on that. But there is one thing I want to point out about this, though. Please keep in mind this, by the way. Um, a lot of people keep arguing that, like, they would not base it on India because, one, there's not enough people in India who do play, you know, Pokemon. I mean, also, take it take it into consideration, right? They based also it on... how They based the region on Hawaii, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm not sure how many people are on Hawaii that play Pokemon. Probably, like, a decent chunk of people still. But, like, you know, just think about it, like, in that sense. Like, you know, just try to, like, you know think of it in that area as well like you know is there enough people there that play pokemon i mean of course in you know in india i think like i have a lot of indian viewers who've told me like they can't buy nintendo consoles in india or if they're able to buy them they're super expensive or pokemon cards are super expensive and impossible to get so in that sense i can get it but well, you know this is scuffed stuff you know you can buy stuff that's scuffed very nice also let's continue um, let's see, let's see, where were we? So, he was talking about this right here. Also, in Pokemon Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon, if you look at the bottle that is on the first island and read it, it states, this place where I am now is really weird and looks unbelievable. All the people here are really nice, so I'm okay. I hope I'll see you again someday. Be safe. Your big brother. I found this hilarious because I have friends that have visited India. They literally described it as a little weird, but unbelievable. Lol. Well, I mean, okay, this is a little bit of like this is a little bit of a personal thing for you, like you know, describing it because you know, I mean, again, I could, I could, I could see that. You know, I mean, I could see India being like a little bit weird, but you know, unbelievable and really just like you know, confusing for somebody who's never seen it before. But very, and you know, a very nice and you know, accepting place. I could assume. I could. I'm assuming, right? I've never been there, so I don't know. Uh, I'm assuming all y'all Indians out there are very nice people. So let's see. Another huge tie to India to uh, for me was that they have something called the Tree of Sun. This is the one that I love the most. This is where I get really interested about his theory. This is where it really speaks to me, right? He says, another huge tie to India for me was that there's something called the Tree of Sun and Moon. So this is where I'm just like, okay, what is this? You know, what is the Tree of Sun and Moon? So let's see, the Indian Tree of Sun and Moon. And you can see right here. The Indian Tree of the Sun and Moon. The Indian Tree of the, the Sun and Moon was an or oracular... Wait, or tree that told the future. Two parts of the tree trunk spoke depending on the time of the day. In daytime, the tree spoke as a male, and at night it spoke as a female. Alexander the Great and Marco Polo are said to have visited this tree. The tree is located in the province of Tonokane, southeast of Persia. All of the locals worship and seek advice from it. It, it is probably the most famous account of an oracle, tr oracle trees in history. So, Again, this is what intrigues me. This is the ones that I, I like it when we go deep, you know what I mean? Into the lore, into the, you know, potential, like, your real-life connections with, like, historical stuff, you know, mythical stuff, mystical, sorry, uh, and that sort of stuff. That's what interests me. I get really intrigued by that. So, you know, that was interesting to me. I was like, okay, this is this is really catching my attention right now. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm on board, my dude. I'm on board. So let's go more in-depth. Let's just kind of keep track of this in a better way, shall we? So, it's a tree that is a, at a specific time of each day. You can see the setting sun on one side and the rising moon on the other. People take pictures of this all the time. Crazy thing is, it looks like a tree of life. Please look this up and think X and Y, tree of Yggdrasil and sun and moon. So the tree of life, of course, that is more northern mythology, right? Uh, it's, yeah, tree of life. Uh, the tree of life is a widespread myth uh, of an archetype in the world's mythologies related to the concept of sacred tree more gen uh, generally, and hence in religion and philosophical philosoph philosophical geez, um, uh, tradition. So, the expression of tree of life was used uh, as a metaphor, metaphor for the uh, phylogenetic tree of common descent in the evolutionary sense in a famous passage by Charles Darwin. But then again, there is a more of a, you know, kind of... Um, I, I know that the freaking, uh, them dudes over there in, uh, in the north, aka right here where I'm right now, I know that the, the tree of Yggdrasil is actually a, a very a common thing, I've heard of it, like, several times, like, right, you know, you've got, like, the snake, you've got, um, what, like, got the snake, the eagle, etc., I can't remember, like, exactly which one it is, but... Let's see. So you, right here it is, right? The the tree of um, Yggdrasil. So you've got like, I think on the top here, you've got like what, an eagle or something like that. And then in the middle, you've got the um, a deer. And then at the bottom, you've got the snake right there. So you can see, see the snake right there. Um, let's see if we can find a better image of it because I feel like that doesn't show it good enough. 
uh, this is kind of hard. I can't find I can't find a good one. But Yggdrasil, Yggdrasil from uh, Old Norse mythology, it's an immense myth mythical tree that connects the nine worlds in North uh, North cosmology. Yggdrasil is attested in the uh, poetic Edda, compiled in the 13th century from a traditional sources, and the Prose Edda, written in the 13th century by Snorri. St St Snorri Sturluson in both sources. Yggdrasil is an immense tree that is the center to the cosmos and considered very holy. The gods go to Yggdrasil daily to assemble uh, assemble at their things, aka governing assemblies, um, and branches of Yggdrasil extend far into the heavens, etc. So, you've got, uh, what do you have? Like, you have different, like, creatures, uh, different creatures, uh, including the uh, dragon, new girl, uh, an unnamed eagle, which is on the top, I think, um, and you've got, like, in the middle, you've got the... I can't remember what it's called again, but... Yeah, besides that point, right? That's one of the, you know, one of the really, like, really good theories about, like, X and Y. And that, that was what the legendaries were based on right there. And if they connect then over to Sun and Moon, that's an even cooler connection, right? And then that connects to another region. That's insane, you know what I mean? So right here, please look this up and think X and Y, Tree of Yggdrasil, Sun and Moon. Cool. So, I depicted the games as either being Life and Death or Pokemon Peace and War. Now... This is not possible, because they can't put war in the title, because that instantly would bump up the the uh, rating of the game to a higher one. But I think if, like, if maybe Peace and Serenity or something like that, or, like, you know, maybe not Life and Death, but, you know, something that, like, a synonym for uh, death or, like, a different word that works, you know, for death or just, like, something that, you know, they can sell without having to have their rating increased or something like that. But I don't think they would definitely not... They would not go for these two names. This would just not fit into the Pokemon theme. It would just be too much. That's, that's way too hard uh, for hardcore for a Pokemon game, I feel like. But, yeah, I mean, I mean, I would be fine with it, but then they wouldn't do it because it wouldn't sell as good and also be very problematic. The region has ties to both of them in their folklore and, their, uh, and that are super interesting which when you study it true this is really important when remembering a theme pokemon has been selling is it all comes together and that is true they have been selling this theme but i haven't meant they haven't mentioned it in a while now we haven't heard about like it all comes together uh since sun and moon's you know reveal and whatnot i'm trying to oh wait i'm trying all these connections to uh i'm trying all this these connections to see how it affects the starters and other Pokemon in game. I attached an image that explains some of my theory in uh, in how X and Y and Sun and Moon and Gen 8 are tied to each other. Now, starters. Grass Fruit Bat. Now, there are a lot of Fruit Bats in this region, and when I thought about the lineage of the Grass Starters and how it might be uh, decided, uh, decided this, uh, this generation, new generation, I realized that Flying Mammal would align perfectly. We started with Dinosaurs, and the evolution with uh, Bulbasaur to Meganium growing into its neck, Sceptile standing on two legs, Torterra growing a shell, Snivy losing its limbs, Chespin becoming the first mammal, Decidueye showing that birds are direct evolution of dinosaurs, Fruit Bat becomes the first flying mammal. I looked at all the animals in the region. I did not uh, find any more fitting creature that tied to the evolutionary timeline. And a lot of people in the region actually keeps bats as pets. If you look at the attached image, you can also see how fruit bat can easily be made to have a feminine vibe to it, uh, to it, similar to Noibat. So, next one is fire. Cobra fire poison. Okay, if you look at the zodiac that ties to the fire starters, if there is ever a region you'd most want the starter to be a snake, it has to be the cobra with all the snake charmers. Of course, this would be great for an Indian region. I would love a snake fire type. I've wanted that for so long, dude. So long I've wanted that, but they haven't done it. So, with all the snake uh, charmers and the fact that we just had a tiger as a starter, this one is pretty much a no-brainer for the region. I also believe that there is actually an order to the fire starters that others are overlooking. I theorize that Gen 8 starters must be either snake or a goat. The explanation of this order is long, and I can do it in a separate email, which I'd love you to do. I'd love you if you tell me about that, but this email is long enough as it is, and I'll leave you with that. So reference that picture, uh, reference the picture again, and you will see that Gen 8 needs to have a, st a stealthy fire starter. This is what made me think that a snake, as opposed to a goat, in my theory of order within the fire Pokemon Zodiac. So... By far the hardest, and this one, this one's a water buffalo, water ground. So, by far, by far the hardest uh, started to figure out. This is a region that has a huge, dr huge droughts. There are very few, if any, animals that seem to fit the bill as creatures that will live on land or in water. But the water buffaloes in the region are actually actually store water and can go long periods of time without without it. They practically live in the mud, so they seem to be the closest semi-aquatic. Uh, I find, or semi-aquatic creatures or animals. If you want to, if I want to, wait, if I was uh, to be wrong if, about any of them, I think it might be this one. But I can picture a warrior-type buffalo that falls in line with the rest of the water starters again. 
uh, references, the reference of pictures, and you can realize that the water star needs to be bulky. Water buffalo is absolutely perfect for this. So, uh, grass flying, uh, fire poison, grass flying, water ground, fire poison, water ground. Okay, so I'm not sure what he meant by that. So, regional bug, uh, termites, regional bird. Uh, he didn't have one right there, but he says a jungle fowl uh, and peacock. Actually, no, those, those are the ones he was mentioning. Notable new Pokemon, Snow Leopard. Oh, God, I'd love to see this one as a new Pokemon. I agree. Uh, Giant Hornet, big enthusiasts uh, would be thrilled. True. Or bug enthusiast, not big enthusiast. Um, Red Panda, super cute. And yes, a grown man said cute. Yes, that's fine. All good. I agree. Uh, Langur, uh, Langur monkeys. Funny and annoying. Though dogs of a kind are always, uh, of this kind, of any kind, sorry, are always needed. Flame of the forest, grass type. So that is a weird one. Um, regional Vandy variants. <laughs> Young Goose, Go Goats, Rhyhorn, Ursaring, Oddish, Arcanine. So main legendary. Pokemon Life. Slash peace, elephant, uh, ground steel. So elephants are majestic in India. They have been used in wars as pets, and they're all the only creature that tigers fear and run from. They also have gods depicted uh, as half human and half elephants. I can picture one with gold uh, plating, and it's uh, it's the main legendary. Other creatures will look for its protection because the tigers stay away from them. So. Let's see, what else, what else, what else? I think we have, yeah, let's see. So what else do we have here? So uh, we, he says, uh, Pokemon, uh, Death and War, Tiger, Fire and Ice. So, Tiger will roam, the Tiger will roam from forest to uh, forests to snowy mountains. They are the most feared yet loved creatures in the region with tons of folklore and worship. They strike fear in every creature. So that's true. Dragon Legend, Dragon of Droughts. This is for real. There's a story you can look up about the dragon myths in the region and how it controls the water. I thought that this, uh, thought this, this being a great tie to the elephant and tiger who fight for control of the land and other animals. But if the dragon chooses to drink all the water in the areas, all the creatures will become weak and die. Well, that's just kind of creepy and disturbing. The dragon does this to weaken the elephant and tiger so they stop fighting. In turn, the war for p uh, war for peace will decide life and death. Oh, wow. That, that is actually really cool. Dude. It sounds cool and cool the more you did. Other legendaries. Uh, Yeti Pokemon with the Himalaya Himalayas nearby. I can see this it being a region... Uh, see it being a region in the game uh the yeti folklore would be great and didn't uh, and didn't the riddler mention this uh and we all assumed it was um crab crabominable uh possible uh, pseudo legendary here okay so I'm, I'm not sure about that if you can just email me more of these things i would love that so unicorn is a huge tie to them in indian culture a bow a is a ghost legendary okay cool sorry i wrote so much i know you're probably busy but if you had time to read it i genuinely appreciate it and would love your feedback i hope more than anything it, uh, it inspires the video from you thanks you again and uh, the great work you've done Again, dude, don't worry about it, man. You've done more work than I've ever done here. This, you know, thank you so much, man. You're really amazing. Thank you. So, what he's done here is a little bit of a setup, right? He's, I don't know if you guys can see it. He's a stealthy, feminine, bulky, right? So, generation six, the water ty type was the stealthy one. The uh, the fire type was the feminine one. And the grass type was the bulky one, right? So, then, in the next region, generation seven, which is a stealthy one. Well, it's the Sidui, right? It's, you know, that's the stealthy one, uh, which is the grass type. So, the next one's going to be a fire type, right? Uh, which one is feminine? Well, it was the water type. So, next one should be the grass type. That should be the feminine one. So, next one, it's the uh, it's the water type, right? That's the one that hasn't had it yet. So the next one's going to be a bulky water type. He's right. This is kind of a, a pattern they've had for a long time in terms of their starters. There is definitely a pattern in their starter Pokemon. They really put a long time into their starters because I know they know those are going to be the best selling ones and they're going to make the most money from them. I mean, look at Greninja. It's like one of the most popular Pokemon of all time. Uh, the Sidorai as well, very popular. Um, Incineroar as well, very popular, right? There's, these are very popular Pokemon. So of course you want to make sure that, you know, you, you actually find a good way to kind of match all these things together so i can see this as a good like theory it's a really really good one so dude i love this theory i'm a huge fan of it i love what, the amount of work you put into this dude so thank you so much to you my man this is awesome so i want to know what you guys in the comment section feel about this do you think this sounds realistic do you think it sounds ludicrous what are your opinions what are your thoughts let me know in the comment section down below i've got to say i've said that it could be india for a long time now ever since i read nintendo kosuo's um theory about it i'm on board for it being india I am totally on board for it being India. Ever since I read it that first time, uh, you know, his post and whatnot, I've been saying this is definitely a possibility. India seems like a logical place to go to, and it has so many connections. There's so many connections between India and also, uh, you know, uh, like Hawaii and like that sort of stuff, and also connection between Alola and a potential place that could be similar to India based on what we know from real life stuff. So, again, I'm very intrigued, I'm very excited, and I want to know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. 
video. Before we leave, though, guys, we have shirts on sale. If you guys want to check out our shirts, please do so. We're actually going to have some brand new exclusive shirts coming your way very soon. So they're going to be limited edition shirts, hopefully, but we'll see what that happens. I'm just not done with the designs yet, but that's besides the point. Also, join our Discord if you haven't already, because, you know, it's just a good place to go to if you want to kind of communicate with me and, you know, Wi-Fi battles, etc. It's all there. You can, you know, chat, whatnot. But yeah, guys, that's going to be the end of the video. If you enjoyed, drop a like down below, leave a subscribe, and I'll see you all the next time. Bye-bye, ladies and gentlemen.